So I'm Sunalini. Um, thank you all for coming today for the Wireless Field Day at Zebra Technologies. I have the pleasure of introducing you to Impact, which is a locationing and analytics platform for lines of business. Um, you already got a preview from Raj on Insight, which is all about network analytics. And now we'll take you to the operational side of the house on what we do there to solve problems for our customers across various verticals. So we launched Impact last year um, in May 2014. And the focus of Impact essentially was around providing visibility into assets and people in retail, in hospitality, in transport logistics, in warehousing. And we have come across a lot of use cases in those verticals that have uh, led to using not just Wi-Fi technology as a locationing um, feed, but also Bluetooth low energy. So we actually made a foray into making our own Bluetooth low energy beacons and enabling Bluetooth low energy in our access points. So as you will see, a lot of our access points will have Bluetooth and low energy in them, as well as beacons themselves, and the use cases are numerous. Um, I would like to share some good news with you. This was a study that was done by ABI uh, last year based on our technology leadership and our, um, our mind share here because we were one of the first enterprise vendors to come out with a hybrid locationing platform that combined both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth into one unified location technology. So you have one dashboard to see your line of business analytics from both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You have one API that talks back to a workforce management system, a CRM system, a point of sale system, to enable various actions based on the insights that the analytics provide. Again, based on both Wi-Fi and BLE. So a lot of use cases um, are there that you may already be familiar with, you may have heard um, since last year around locationing and retail. But it's all about personalizing the experience for shoppers as they walk into a store, or it's about either directly interacting with them via the application or customizing the environment around them. So you as a shopper may get an anonymous greeting that just welcomes you to the store, or you as a shopper may get you know, a digital sign that you walk in front of actually showing you content relevant to you. So there are myriad ways that locationing and retail is showing up to solve the same problems that the online e-telling world has already done using locationing as the core technology. Similar use cases apply in hospitality about making the experience more personalized for the customer or the guest or the visitor. We also have a lot of use cases showing up in warehousing and transport logistics, again using Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy as the underlying sources for either tracking devices, tracking associates for productivity, or even um, trying to figure out where the right package is and are the packages being loaded in the right car to enable on-time deliveries. And uh, I think the key thing that we are seeing is that it's, if you look at the locationing technology world right now for indoor LBS, it's about you know, questions come around, is Wi-Fi the be-all, end-all? Is Bluetooth the be-all, end-all? The use cases that we are coming across, we're actually seeing that we are using a very complementary approach of Wi-Fi in certain areas in a deployment and then using Bluetooth low energy to complement that where micro-location is concerned. Um, I'll go a little bit into the architecture, and then we'll go straight into a demo in the interest of time. So as I mentioned, we offer a combined platform for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy. The architecture for Wi-Fi, as you all are very familiar with, is about the access points sensing wireless clients, setting that data to a server that could be in the cloud or it could be in the NOC, and then doing the data crunching for location calculations. For Bluetooth low energy, the architecture is almost flipped. Because now what you have with Bluetooth low energy is that you have beacons that are purely transmitting and are fixed beacons. And you have the SDK in a device, which is now like a mobile sensor. And the calculations for the location actually happen on the device itself. This information is then sent back to the server. The server has context of where those fixed beacons have been placed. And now you know the context of where the device actually is by virtue of the device reporting which beacon it's heard. So it's more a mobile sensing technology versus a fixed infrastructure technology. But at the end of the day, we are able to give our customers the best of both world solution where you have either an infrastructure-led <coughs> locationing solution as well as a mobile sensing-based solution. So not only do we provide 
a very accurate locationing solution, whether it's you know, Wi-Fi with three to five meters. In fact, we're deployed at um, all the properties of Caesars and are able to get four, feet, four meters of Wi-Fi accuracy consistently. Or it's Bluetooth low energy locationing, which gives you micro locationing services, uh, all proximity based, and you're able to get one to two meters of accuracy. Along with that locationing engine layer, we've also developed a very comprehensive suite of line of business analytics looking at heat maps, looking at dwell times, looking at a trending of those metrics over the last one week, over the last one month, over the last one year, looking at which departments got more traction versus others across your entire chain in retail, looking at what the associate staffing is like, and then marrying the associate staffing data with the customer data to then tell our retailers saying, are they optimized for staffing in a particular store? So with that being said, I'll hand over to Peri now to walk through a demo of the solution. I am uh, Peri Indukuri. I'm a part of our technical marketing team. So I would like to talk about our uh, impact analytics today. So this is uh, one of our demo servers that we set up in, in this uh, premises. So we have uh, some data coming from our AlphaNet, which is our uh, Wi-Fi network. And we also have some sites uh, that have dummy data. So here, as you can see, so we have uh, multiple sites, and you can have uh, a system level view that will give analytics across all the sites that we set up. Or you can actually select a specific site, and we give uh, visibility on uh, site level. So right now, I am at a uh, system level. So that means it provides aggregate data across all the sites. So if somebody is looking at it, so they have a visibility on uh, the total customers. So how many customers that are seen today across all the sites? And uh, you also see some arrow here. Either it's a down tick or up tick. So compared to yesterday. So that means today, so there is a 7% less number of customers compared to yesterday. So across all the sites. And you also have visibility on uh, the new customers. So, so how many percentage of customers are new versus how many are repeat? So you kind of get visibility on, on both. And we also provide average customer, average number of customers. So for the last 30 days across all the sites, what are the average number of customers seen? And uh, so this is the average engagement time. So that is, if you have, say, X number of devices seen or X number of visitors seen, so we kind of like you know, the add up all the dwell time or the amount of time they spend, and then we kind of divide that uh, by total number of uh, devices seen. So you kind of get average engagement time. So this is uh, the snapshot, and we also provide analytics. So you can, historical analysis, right? So this one, you can pick up any date and time, and you, you can uh, get the visibility. So for some reason, I'm not able to show you the full picture here. So this is uh, the trending of uh, new customers, repeat, and uh, associates. So as Sunilani mentioned, we can actually categorize uh, the visitors as, as the visitors, or like you know, if there are store associates, we can classify, and we kind of provide uh, the trending of, of uh, the new customers, repeat, and associates. So you can pick up any date and time, and we, we show you uh, the trend of those devices. And here you can see the, the peak number of devices. So in, in the last one day, so when was the peak uh, in terms of new customers? And when was the peak in terms of uh, repeat customers? So you get all that uh, visibility here. So we also show the, uh, the visitors based on the profiling. So we have what we call engaged it's not shown up properly. Uh, engaged customers <coughs> passing by and bounces. So bounces are any customers that are just walking uh, across the store, not necessarily coming into the store. And then uh, passing by, sorry, passing by is outside visitors. And bounces are, are the number of uh, visitors that are coming in but spending less than five minutes. Okay. And then engaged is any visitor that is seen inside and spending more than 10 minutes. So we kind of profile all the visitors based on uh, where they are and how much time they spend. So
So the, we also provide what is called site ranking. So site ranking is based on, so if you have multiple sites that, that are uh, managed by a single instance, then we kind of like uh, categorize those sites based on the total number of uh, customers seen at, across uh, different sites. Okay, so we can do this ranking based on the total number of customers or based on the total amount of time they are spending. So here, so we can show the top six or bottom six. So you can pick up, uh, if you want to see the, what are the, the, the low performing stores versus uh, top performing stores. And you can also rank it based on the customers. So the ranking based on the customer could be potentially different from ranking based on the engagement, right? So these are various sites. So in home improvement, you have uh, 28,000. So this is rank number one. And if you want to see the trend of these sites, and if you want to see the data for last one week, you can do that. You can pick up any of these uh, sites and you can do the training. <laughs> Very powerful uh, analytics uh, platform. So once you do the site ranking, so we also show what is called category ranking, okay? So within a site, if you want to understand which areas are getting a more traction compared to other areas, so that is based on the category, okay? So for example, here, uh, so these are different categories that we set up in the systems. So marketing area has got a lot of, uh, uh, devices spend in terms of another you know, engagement time. So you can rank it based on, based on the category. So this is at uh, site level and you can also pick up a specific site and and do the analysis. So basically, it, it just shows the data only for that specific site. Can I ask you a quick question? So um, there you had a couple areas, and like just as an example, like roulette is something that's a smaller footprint yeah. typically. Yeah. Um, I know you, we're talking briefly about the hybrid sort of low energy Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, th that information, those analytics, can that come from either, either or? Correct. So if the system is deployed to feed both Wi-Fi and BLE, this is aggregated view of all the devices. Okay. Yeah. So if you are looking at the data for a specific site, we have what is called Active View, where you can filter devices based on Wi-Fi or BLE. Okay, so you could you could dig down into those, like the roulette numbers, and see if that was a Bluetooth or... Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, you can pick up any specific site. So I'd also like to talk a little bit about notifications. So we spoke about analytics. Analytics, end of the day, is giving our customers data and visibility to what's happening you know, in their location, be it again, retail, hospitality, transport, logistics, warehousing. But all that data is meaningless if there are no actions that they can take on that data, right? So what we have done is we've developed a very sophisticated notifications engine where not only like other vendors, you can give notifications on entry, exit, dwell time, but we've also built triggers around ratios and density. Use cases being, Let's take the ratio example. You know, if the retailer has a threshold for so many associates for so many customers, let's say one associate for every 20 customers, and if that ratio goes out of whack, they will get a notification into their workforce management system saying, this event got triggered, please take action. Another uh, use case is about density. So they may say, not only do I want to know, you know how much time people are spending in a particular area in front of a particular product category, but let's say it's the deli section in a grocery store or the point of sale register when you're checking out. <coughs> and the trigger could be if this count of people exceeds 10 with a dwell time of 10 minutes, send me a trigger. So the store manager can now open up another cashier counter. So that's where, you know, from a sense, analyze, act framework, the actions come into play for lines of business with these notification triggers. This is what uh, Sunali is talking about. Uh, so we have what is called basic triggers. Because of a screen resolution, I cannot really show the whole thing. So we have uh, entry, presence, dwell, and exit. So somebody enters into a specific area, you get uh, entry notification. And if, if they are actually staying for more than X amount of time, 
So they are, if they are present for that long, so we also trigger what you call presence and uh, dwell. Dwell, you can configure certain time, say five minutes. So if somebody is uh, staying in a specific area for, say, five minutes, so we trigger dwell notification. So that way, retailers can take action uh, and send associate to help the customers. Okay? And exit event. If somebody leaves that uh, region, we trigger exit event. So this is density based on, again, a dwell time and a number of uh, uh, devices that are in a specific area. And then ratio, okay? So if uh, there are a lot of customers, but there are very few associate in a specific area, so you can define rules based on that uh, impact can trigger notification uh, to a store manager for sending out any associates. The largest uh, installed base you have with. So we have. Uh, actually for uh, the Bluetooth technology, we are in two large orders right now. Right. I can't name names, but we are working with one of the largest uh, big box apparel stores that's rolling this out right now across their close to 800 plus stores. That would be our largest impact deployment. We have also been deployed closely in, um, I would say, a lot of malls, a lot of zoos for uh, analytics data as well as our API use. So API is, I would say, very, it's very robust and it's been used a lot for interaction with backend systems. Yeah. And I already mentioned Caesars where we deploy 50,000 access points uh, for LBA services. That's a large one as well. Is that Caesars global or? The season that you property, so all the 40 casino properties. Did you say 50,000? Yeah. 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 40, 40 properties, right? We actually have, I think, a video on our website for these case studies. That's primarily based on Wi Fi. Cool. So, this is the active view. You can pick up any of the site and go to uh, a specific floor, and you can see the both Wi-Fi and BLE devices. So all BLE is shown as uh, yellow and the Wi-Fi devices are shown green. So right now, I mean, we don't have visitors that are using the SDK. So whatever the devices that you see are the Wi-Fi devices, and they are based on the alpha name that we have here. The only so what we're showing you here is zone. So we do three tiers of locationing, present zone and position. Position is the most accurate where BLE really shines with one to two meters. Wi-Fi, you get three to five meters. Yes, you can do one to two meters locationing with Wi-Fi on paper. Uh, we have yet to see that happen. We have heard about it in the news and from other vendors. But there is something happening from a standards perspective where the Wi-Fi standards themselves are moving towards micro-locationing that can give you one to two meters of accuracy, which we are following very closely. Um, Wi-Fi so, aware, right? It's the standard. No, Wi-Fi aware is separate. There is a okay. Wi-Fi locationing uh, work group that's also in place right now. So, I'm in the interest of time. You know, uh, just wanted to ask if you have any other questions that either you can take now or we can respond to your blog posts. Uh, but let us know. We did, did want to give you a primer on what we have been working on, uh, which we feel is very unique given the fact that it brings together two technologies for the same use cases in multiple verticals. Well, I think uh, I was just going to comment. I think that's one differentiator <laughs> right now, right, is that being able to do analytics across both. Exactly. It's a gap for a lot of the other vendors where they've, you know, either gone one way completely and said, okay, we're just going to do Bluetooth or we're just going to do Wi-Fi. So being and able even to do for those who have done some Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, they still have two different systems. 